Porsche's 911 continues to evolve, fundamentally so in the case of this improved 991 series model, where a switch to turbocharging has been made for the entire Carrera lineup. The result is not only vastly improved efficiency, but even more power and torque. Can all of this be delivered, though, without dilution of the magical experience that served this model line so well for so long? And which 911 will suit you best? Rear or four-wheel drive, coupe, soft top, business express or race refugee? Here's where we find out. The engine has always dominated the 911 driving experience and that's just as true with this turbocharged Carrera. The 3 litre flat 6 might sound a touch more muted than the previous normally aspirated unit but you still get a delightful howl from the boxer motor and significantly more pulling power too. With so much low and mid rev torque from this turbo you can drive it as lazily as you like. Press harder though and this Porsche's brilliant handling is matched by almost staggering speed. Pick the right combination of engine, gearbox and options and uh, this car will rocket past 62 miles an hour from a standstill in less than 4 seconds. Yet a wisely specified 911 will be also capable of up to 38.2 miles per gallon. It's quite a combination. Carrera buyers choose from two versions of this 3 litre turbo power plant. You get 370 brake horsepower with this standard Carrera model or 420 brake horsepower if you opt for the pricier Carrera S. Uh, the outputs in both cases being 20 brake horsepower greater than they were before. You can also choose between rear or four wheel drive and manual or PDK auto gearboxes. Plus there's a driving mode rotary controller that allows you to tailor the throttle response and even the exhaust note to your taste. You can alter the suspension field too, thanks to the now standard Porsche Active Suspension Management System. With PDK Auto models, the driving mode controller offers an additional sport response button for quicker overtaking. And there are also optional systems that can reduce body roll, improve corner turning, and even richen up the exhaust note, should you want them. It's easy to assume the styling team for the 911 has the easiest job in the world. After all, essentially the same shape has been used ever since the car was originally launched back in 1963, and that continuity is a big part of its appeal. You certainly know today's model at a glance. It's still the most compact car in its class, with the curvy shape and the trademark wide-arched wings both present and correct. Look a little closer, though, and there are plenty of examples of evolution in action many of them prompted by the installation of that new turbocharged 3-litre engine plumbed in out back. And inside, well, much has changed, yet little seems different. So as ever, you slide behind the wheel to find a traditionally upright dash with an instrument cluster dominated by a large central rev counter flanked by two circular dial spaces on either side. Uh, cabin quality is everything you'd expect from a six-figure supercar and it includes lovely details that existing owners will definitely recognise. Uh, things like this digital and analogue stopwatch centrally placed on top of the dash and fitted as part of the optional Sport Chrono package. Uh, less familiar is an addition to this improved model. This well, rather cheap-looking rotary controller that sits below the right-hand spoke of the redesigned steering wheel and allows you to switch between the various driving modes. The other key interior change applies to all 911 models and covers the long-overdue infotainment upgrade introduced for this second-generation 991 series model. Previously, the central Porsche communication management screen you had to pay extra for incorporated really very little in terms of modern era connectivity. Now, though, there's pretty much everything you could want. Not only is the more intuitive 7-inch touchscreen standard fit, but it also includes a Connect Plus package providing Wi-Fi, Internet connection, uh, real-time traffic information and Google Earth and Google Street View accessibility. Now, with most supercars, this is where we'd be finishing our tour of the cabin, but the 911 has its reputation as the most practical and usable model in its class to uphold. Hence the inclusion of the two small rear seats that you'd have to do without in the brand's 718 Cayman and Boxster models, and in many rivals. 
It's Much of the time, of course, you'll probably be using these rear pews purely as a stowage point for briefcases or designer shopping bags, some of which might fit in behind the backrests where there's a 150 litre compartment. Fold the backrests forward and you have a total of 260 litres of room to use. That means that anything you can't fit inside therefore has to go into this compartment beneath the sculpted bonnet. Now, whichever body style you choose, this boot out front is 145 litres in size, or at least it is in a two-wheel drive variant like this one. Bear in mind that the capacity falls to just 125 litres if you go for a four-wheel drive model. In summary, what we have here is a worthy evolution of the world's longest-running sports car dynasty. Porsche is banking on the fact that the excellence of this 911 will help to simplify the decision over whether to commit to the significant outlay involved in buying it. If over 50 years of development has taught us anything, it's that you wouldn't bet against them succeeding in doing just that. <laughs>